So guys, this morning, which is bank holiday Monday, I have started on the extraction. I'm using Airflow's um, 125mm fans. I really like Airflow fans. Um, they're quite low noise, they're good extraction rates, they're low wattage. Um, when I used to fit fans domestically in customers' properties, they were very reliable, um, so I like them. Um, I've just been sort of sorting bits and pieces with regards to getting some stuff out of the way. We're still waiting for a rack to come that fits under there. Um, but, you know, we're getting there. <coughs> oh, if you're interested about the green glow, it's because one of the LEDs has got green on at the minute. Anyway, so we're coming up here, um, still midst of um, sorting bits and pieces. What we've got is we're going to have, so we say sorting extraction. So I'm using semi-rigid or semi-flexible um duct you'll be able to pull this down like so and have it extract over where you're working and it will stay there um you know or you can uh, push it out of the way if you want to let's say because this would be the soldering station so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the 125 mil fan on the underside there we'll end up mounting a switch um something somewhere accessible so that it's easy to work with I'm going to use nice sweeping bends, um, so that'll get cut, we'll carry on with um, a bit of uh, rigid, is it aluminium or steel, I'm not sure, I'll just call it aluminium now, for now, um, aluminium duct, no it's steel actually, I'm pretty sure it's steel, okay we'll go with steel, um, so <laughs> we carry on with a steel duct into the corner, sweeping bend, <clears throat> or two Y pieces with a 45 degree cut like this, um, one's got a 100 mil adapter coming in uh, to it which is just over the back there and one's 125 mil so this 125 mil will go somewhere over here um, the oven will go in there I'm going to take these two frames out um, and then the oven can plug into the socket over there so that will be for that the uh, 100 mil one is actually for the extraction for the cabinet so I've got a second one of these come in uh, this week so hopefully sort of Wednesday Thursday ish we'll have that and uh, then we can put the fourth printer in it and then we've got space for two more um <clears throat> we've got filament coming tomorrow as well 23 kilos of filament which is fantastic so we can actually get back up to full production capacity uh which would be great and uh yeah so that will go in next to so this cabinet will get pushed over then there'll be the other cabinet goes in next to it um i might have to swap the doors around or something just to so that you can actually still get in there i'm not really sure i've already moved the desk over a little bit to give us a bit more room um but you, as you know we're working with limited space as you've seen in the previous videos or even just this video just having a quick walk around now um so i still need to work out the how i'm going to do this y piece in terms of getting into the um into 100 mil um i didn't particularly want it to loop down but i think it might have to because otherwise you know the only way that that was going to work is if it went up and across and down and that means that it'd have to be loads of 30 mil bends and then we're slowing airflow again so it might be make more sense just to go straight across have our um have our y piece over there because obviously the ducts needs to kind of go that way and then it can go up the center and then maybe have another y or plastic y piece or something um at the top for the two cabinets to extract into um yeah so anyway the duct will oops yeah when you drop your brand new phone that's always handy um the the um the duct will carry on all the way through and um we'll dr drill a 125 mil hole there um just one of the things i wanted to just point out one of the things i really like about airflow fans is you undo the little clips and the motor comes out and you're left with this um which is great because then you can get on and mount it mount all your ducts etc and put the fan in after um so it's really useful
couple of things that I may not have thought about as well or allowed for. Um, so one of those is obviously the duct height makes the access into the storage a little bit restrictive. It's not huge, uh, it's just one of those things. And the thing that I kind of, as I'm going around, I'm having to sort of think about is the filters. So <clears throat> let me just grab a filter box, which is just this. This is one of the filter boxes. Hey. Luckily no one's down there murdering them with uh, bits of aluminium. Anyway, um, so this is one of the filter boxes, uh, which is going to probably mount like that. And um, the inlet, yeah, inlet's that side. Outlet's the cage side. Um, so that filter box is relatively small, but the F7 filter box that we've got coming that we don't have yet is quite a bit bigger. And I don't know how big. Um, and the thing I have to think about is, um, so obviously a duct is coming in there at the minute. Um, I think I'm gonna have to lower that a little bit because it's obviously not level at the minute, it's sweeping up anyway. But it may well need to kind of sweep up because it's likely, and I could certainly tell you that I'm not gonna get that filter box in tight enough up there. Well, I don't think I would anyway, to be in line with that hole. Um, and I say, I think the F7 filter box is bigger. So it's likely that we're gonna have to have some sort of, um, sort of thing where the duct comes in a bit lower, feeds into the filter boxes and then kind of jumps up and out. Um, which isn't exactly ideal and I think obviously if I would knew that I was going to do this and didn't originally, I would have core cut the hole um, in a better position, i.e. lower. Um, it's just one of those things and I'm kind of the sort of person that kind of just does something, throws it together and hopes for the best and when it, and kind of just rejigs it all the time. Um, I'm the same when I'm making light fittings. You know, when I build any of the light fittings, what I do is um, I literally just have an idea. I just start changing some stuff in the, in the program. And I just machine it and I see it come out. I used to do drawings with bits and pieces, but I don't really use cam software. So or I don't use cam software at all. Um, I program everything just on the machine. So I like to kind of just have it in my hand see it and then go oh do i need to make this adjustment and that adjustment and make another part it's just kind of a little bit of work really um anyway so i mean it's getting it's certainly getting there i see we've got a wire piece to go up to the um to to feed to suck from two of the cabinets um we've got our section under here so that's connected at the moment to the first half i've still got to cut the um flexi duct and connect it to the other half and get that fan in um oh <laughs> I've just realized the mistake. I've just looked at that and realized I need to get one of these in. I haven't, I didn't really, I didn't go and cut this duct anyway. This duct was just an off cut and I just thought I'd just stick it up there just to kind of measure at least that distance. But obviously this uh, T piece needs to go in. Um, we're gonna have, because we're gonna have two cabinets in here, you won't really get into that space too much. So we're probably gonna have the oven here. So I think this particular, piece is going to need to go probably there um, and then we can have just a tiny bit of flexi duct coming off of that so yeah we'll get that in as well
So just to give you a quick rundown of where we are at the end of Monday, part three. Um, so we've got roughly the extraction in. Obviously we're missing the F7 filter. At the moment I've temporarily stuffed in um, Flexi 125mm into the 100mm there. Um, we've got the extract here. I have to see how that plays out. Um, I'm a little bit worried that it's not going to pull all the all the um, stuff coming out of the oven at the moment. Maybe we make some sort of funnel thing that causes it to go in there or maybe we have to make some more adjustments to that. Um, we've got a fan connected up to there at the moment onto that temporarily until we get a wire piece. Quite a lot of temporary, isn't there? Um, we've got our fan connected down there. I just need to strap on the um, semi-rigid um, to the back end of the fan and i still need to put in the switches for all of the fans one there um, one there and one over here um, so that's probably going to get done another day i'll probably have to temp up that the fan over there for um before the before we start tomorrow um, and i might have to temp up the 3d printer fan as well um, but we'll see we'll see how it goes and um yeah i'll give you the next update when we when we do the next bit